This tiny little moon, 500 kilometers in diameter, has proved that it can surprise everybody. Water vapor plumes with organic material coming out of this tiny little moon, who would have thought? I get asked whether Enceladus is my favorite moon, and at the moment it is, partly based on the observations that my team made and the discovery that we made at Enceladus. So the Cassini mission was the first uh, spacecraft mission to orbit around Saturn and its moons. It was also the first mission to taste what was in an extraterrestrial ocean. The mission kept being extended and extended, and so in the end the mission lasted for 13 years. The discoveries were pretty radical. We were flabbergasted, to be frank. And I think for me the most surprising discovery that was made was this water vapour plume at Enceladus, which we then followed up with discoveries about a liquid water ocean, under the surface a heat source, organic material. I've now given away all the secrets. <laughs> My team and I changed the course of the mission because this was a team effort. So we had three flybys of Enceladus and two of these flybys were quite distant flybys. In the data that my instrument took, so data from the magnetic field in the environment of Enceladus, we saw some strange signatures that we weren't expecting to see. And what those signatures were telling us was almost as if Enceladus was a bigger obstacle, a bigger body than it looked. We thought maybe we hadn't got the trajectory of the spacecraft back properly, so maybe we were seeing an artifact in the data. But the fact that we saw it on two separate flybys meant that we, we said, OK, we thought we were seeing something. So I actually travelled out to the Jet Propulsion Lab and I was planning to make a presentation to the project because what I wanted to do was I wanted to persuade them that we thought we were seeing this really strange atmospheric signature um, and that it would be really good to go close on the third flyby. And I was really nervous because if the flyby changed, that meant all of the plans that we had made for the last six and a half years would have to be changed. And some instruments would not take the data that they'd planned to. But the possibility that we would discover this water vapor atmosphere of Enceladus was exciting enough that the majority of people decided it was worth a go. It was extremely nerve-wracking waiting for that third flyby. So, you know, I'd essentially put my and my team's reputation on the line. And so I must confess, the first, the two or three nights before the flyby, I didn't sleep very well. I tossed and turned a lot. Because if they hadn't found anything, no one would ever have believed anything I said again. You know, every once in a while you have to be brave and you have to say that you think you're seeing something. But luckily they found something. When we had that third flyby, what we found was instead of it being an atmosphere covering the entire surface, there was simply an outgassing of water vapour from the South Pole. In addition to that, because we went so close, all of the other instruments were able to take fantastic data sets as well. And what we found is there were cracks at the South Pole through which this water vapour was escaping. There was an internal heat source. There was organic material. And so that meant we had three of the four things for potential habitability to form. You need a heat source, you need liquid water, you need organic material, and then you need those first three things to be stable enough over a long enough period of time that something can actually happen. So that's when there was a, a real focus on Enceladus for potentially being a place where life or habitability might have been there in the past or might be able to form in the future. The coming together of all of the Enceladus data and the discoveries that were made um, underpins what I think is one of the most important discoveries that has been made in planetary science in the last 30 years. And that is that you don't need to look close to the sun to find liquid water. You can be quite far from the sun, but you can find liquid water just not on the surface, it's underneath the surface. And so that's been a, almost been a sea change in planetary science. We now have a, a much better understanding about Enceladus and its internal structure. So we have a global liquid water ocean underneath the surface of Enceladus, and the surface is, is made up mainly of water ice. 
Biggest unanswered questions for Enceladus are why is there only a water vapour plume at the South Pole? We still don't quite understand why there's a heat source. Because the fact remains that it was formed billions of years ago. Because it's so small, it should have cooled down. Um, and so we think it might be linked to um, its orbit around Saturn. So if the, if the orbit around the Moon is not completely circular, then on some parts of the orbit it's closer to the planet than on others. And when that happens, tidal forces keep the interior warm. I think Enceladus will always be memorable for me because in some ways it was my way of becoming confident in my, in my ability to persuade people, but also confident in my team and what we were able to do with the data. That's probably why it's my favourite moon. Depending on what we discover at Ganymede, it might move slightly down my list. For me it was almost a coming of age for my team, but also for the instrument. You know, people say to me, why do you explore planets? And for me, we are explorers. Humankind have always been explorers. When we didn't know much about the Earth, people would take ships and, and, and go to what some people said was the edge of the Earth and they were scared they're going to fall off. For me, exploring planets is part of that exploration. It's what we do. My first view of Saturn, actually, was through a telescope that my dad built. I saw Saturn and its rings. Didn't see any of the moons because Saturn is so far away, but we were able to see the rings clearly. And we also saw Jupiter and some of its moons as well. So I never thought back when I was a child that I'd end up doing what I do today. I will never forget Enceladus. In planetary science, it will always be an important thing. And it will be an example that people refer to in the future as well.